a big part of yeah the architecture that we look at looks like it was you know th these buildings weren't necessarily you know buildings that, that we look at them more as machines uh, like free mm -hmm. energy machines they all have the big domes that are made of copper they have big spires going up you know we know that there's free energy the higher you go up um they're all basic you know grounded you find all these strips going down it's got a lot to do with geometry um you know all this stuff but it looks like it was integrated and, and sort of beneficial to mankind but at some but sometime um at least a couple of hundred years ago something's happened um we don't know you know what happened to the center of australia but it's the same as what you see in the middle east around sodom and gomorrah you see it all across the sahara and the sahara is of course it's like a like the, the whole sahara is full of old cities and castles that are just smashed mm. so it looks like yeah some big events going on and whether that's like a plasma event from the sky like a natural sort of plasma yeah, no, uh, discharge that, that's gone on or whether it's something more like a jew weapon you know um like a, an actual attack we're not sure but but what it looks like is there was a society running and something's happened and either we've been attacked and lost or it's been natural and someone's you know the people that rule us now that are keeping all this all the secrets they've just come in and sort of taken over and here we find ourselves and we don't sort of know where we are who we are uh you know what our past or history is and, and of course like you say the government are, are willfully hiding this you know and, and we know that you know that fraternity right those I probably don't know. Can I say it? Yeah. Uh, those free people who like masonry, the free Freemasons. Yeah. Um, we, we say that they're called that because they came to all these cities, right? And what did they find? Free masonry, free buildings, yeah. and they took it all. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because when you were doing that, both Evan and I were thinking of one site, weren't we? We were, yeah. It's the same site, and I'm, I probably need to explain. I'll give you the very, very vaguest of details about where it is. It's not far from Sydney. Yeah, there was, it was featured in one of those. So yeah, it's um, called Butterbox, and, and the, oh, yeah. the trick with Butterbox was we were invited to that site because we don't go on to country unless we're asked by someone, normally an elder, in fact, always an elder. And with Butterbox... Um, it's not like any other site you'll find in Australia. Number one, when we went there, the first, and I asked original people about this site and they said they wouldn't go there. I was taken by a white fella. It's about the only time we had been, isn't it? Yeah. Because no black fella goes near it. It's death country. And when we got there, there was a couple of things we noticed that really stood out. Number one, no birds, no animals. And this is the scary part. No insects, were there? Mm, I couldn't so find an insects. ant. I couldn't find a fly. I could. And whenever we go on country, we always have bird sign. It's like obligatory. It's like the spirits are welcoming us. And when we got to this particular site, um, it was just, it was not like any site I've been to. There was no life there. And we had three women, didn't we, Evan? We'll yep. talk about the three women too, <laughs> won't we? Yep. Anyway, so we went to this site for the day and we picked up gutters where you could sit inside them, an old man from mm -hmm. sandstone. And what was interesting, the place we went to has got the softest sandstone there is. You can pick up the rocks there and you can crumble them in your hand to individual grains with no effort. It's called type four sandstone because type one is like granite and everyone thinks sandstone's the same. Well, let, I'm sorry, you're just wrong. <laughs> this stuff is rubbish, but amongst it, we were finding gutters that you could sit inside. We were finding domes we were finding a, a, a structure that was about 30 meters high was broken to sections wasn't it yeah and we spent the day looking at this site and it was really obvious the way it was and we've even found um stone pipes mm. with melted slag caught inside the stone sandstone pipes yeah i thought this is this is amazing they're, they're melting things here this is something that's quite advanced but it was destroyed. And, of course, people would say, well, how can you prove that? Number one, because all these things were scattered over about 5Ks, weren't they? Yeah. All over the place and everything was smashed up. But <clears throat> the main reason I knew there was something wrong with the site is that night the three women that were involved in this all ended up in hospital with exactly the same symptoms. Bleeding, wasn't it? Yeah, they were coughing up blood. Coughing up blood, wow. all three of the women. They went there this morning, fine, bouncing around, and by that night, 
they went to different, I think two went to one hospital and the other person went to a different hospital, didn't even know each other. And we found out the next day they were all still in hospital in quite serious conditions and they finally recovered. Now, I would say to you, the chances of one person being sick at, at the site is quite okay. Two is quite rare. And there's a saying about third time proves it. If three different women, we only had three women there, if they're all in hospital the next day and they're all bleeding and they're coughing up blood, that's the site. The site, and that's why the original people wouldn't go there, and that's why the birds and the animals and the insects wouldn't go there. And to be honest, we haven't gone back, have we? No, we haven't. <laughs> I, I would like to go back with like a EMF reader. A uh, Geiger uh, counter. A Geiger counter, mm -hmm. all, that, all the gadgets yeah. just to see what happens. Yeah, but I knew at the start when I got there and I couldn't see an animal there, I thought this is not a good site. I knew the elders told me, we're not going there. Good luck. But that was the remains of that place was blown up. As simple as that, it was blown up. And we did the research on it because some people would say, oh, it's the remnants of buildings from the first settlers. We did a lot of research on this. This place was discovered by the Catholic Walking Club, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. In We're about 1940. Yeah. No one had been there before there, for God's sake. No one had even got there. In fact, there's a, uh, a mountain near there, and I'm not going to say which one because it gives away the location, where if people, when they climbed it, put, their, uh, put it on a piece of paper and put it in a bottle to say they'd been there. And the earliest date was 1936. So nobody went there. And some people could say it's an abandoned building. Man, it's on the top, in the Blue Mountains, on the very top where you can see in every direction and you couldn't grow a thing in that soil. Yeah. It's just pure grains of um, sandstone. So that's a place that was fully blown up and destroyed. And what's fascinating is whatever was done to it, that energy is still there. Mm. It hasn't gone. So I don't know what they did to it, but I can tell you something. Whatever, however they blew it up, they did a bloody good job on it because nothing can live there. No animals live there and no people should go there. And to be honest, it's a dangerous place to go. And if you were a woman, you wouldn't go there. Gosh, it's imagine good. imagine if it was actually um, tech that had been trapped underground, underground, still in some of the structure and actually still functioning on some level and emitting yeah, a very been toxic to a site like that too. frequency. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we've been, we've been to a site like, like that also. Uh, yeah. All the trees grow I'll, to a certain point and, and then collapse. fall down and all and around long. and it's like a, a, a rectangle of bush and what happened was one of our people his name was um ryan wasn't it mm. ryan mullins was going through because we had some um some a map from klaus duna to take us to different sites from a more ancient civilization which he said was 15 k's by five across and it was all buildings there and we got about 150 hits. And the five we went to, we got amazing sights on every occasion. But Andy went to this site and he got there and he's walking through the bush and all of a sudden you just go into a complete rectangle. It's like someone cut it out and you've got trees on top of trees on top of trees. You can't walk on the ground. You can't get near there because there's so many dead trees on top. But those same trees, if you go past into any of the four corners, everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. But what was interesting with um, Ryan was because he was on his own and didn't do ceremony, he nearly died there. He collapsed while he was there and crawled out of the site. When he got out of the site, he started to come good, okay? And, he, and basically what we then did is we went back as a group and I gave ceremony to the site and we tried to work out what the hell was going on. Our understanding is there's something underneath that site that's still functioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what Klaus was telling us too, because we got back to Klaus about this, Klaus Duna. He's done a lot of work around the world on this sort of stuff, and he said, take a mask next time and make sure it's complete. Don't let any of that air in because he feels that side is still, whatever's happened to it, whatever energy or what's been placed underneath, is still functioning. There is not one fern, not one anything that can grow on that site and if it does, you can see a couple of trees that have started to grow and already they've got a use by date. You can see they're just dying as they grow. So, so, yes, uh, is there evidence? Absolutely. I'm not prepared to say where it comes from, 
um, it may be what you're talking about is right. The same way I'm not prepared to say yes or no to flat earth because I don't hold an opinion either way on that, okay? That's not, for us, we've got enough battles <laughs> yeah. to fight without yeah. fighting yeah. others, to be honest. Yeah. We keep away from other people's <laughs> other crusades. We've yeah, got enough yeah, yeah. Own. But what I can tell you is there is uh, copious amounts of evidence that we found and measured and we've charted that proves to us there were far more advanced civilizations in Australia and for reasons we don't understand and we've been to one place that gives us a clue, your idea of them being destroyed, certainly something like that's happened in Australia because we do know the remains of that desert place. They told us then it had been destroyed. <coughs> the place we went to had been smashed and that other place I spoke about would be about 40, 50 k's from the one that's uh, been blown up with the gutters. So it's not just one site on its own. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I have no doubt authorities further up the pecking order know of these sites, mm -hmm. absolutely know of them, and are doing everything they can to make sure that they never do get known. I mean, the people still in power would be the descendants of those who conquered the land in the first place, wouldn't they, really? Yeah. So they're, they're, hiding, they're keeping the secret to keep the power. Oh, absolutely. Oh.